country and in our world, Lord. Um, you are a God who makes all things new, and we pray that you would do that and grant us grace as we uh, read your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, just a few things, gave you some dates connected to um, connected to these um, uh, these prophecies against various countries. Lots of place names mentioned, so I found um, a map that, that, that provides most of it. It doesn't give you all of the information. Uh, you'll notice that Ammon, Moab, and Edom are really close to um, Israel. Um, Gaza, when you see Gaza just beneath Jerusalem, that's where the Philistines are from. And then, of course, Egypt is familiar to all of us. Um, Ammon uh, gloated over the destruction of Jerusalem, we'll be told. And um, so they rejoice at the fall of Israel, and so they will be punished for that. Moab um, viewed Judah with contempt at their destruction. Uh, Edom and Philistia took revenge or on, on Judah, and so they're also held accountable to that. And the Carathites who are mentioned are the rest of the peoples, coastal peoples near and often associated with Philistia, which will be mentioned. Um, so in some sense, uh, I think the passage is dealing with God's sovereignty and judgment over the nations. There is no partiality when it comes to judgment with God. Um, there's also, I think, a warning um, about rejoicing at the fall of others. God is holding them accountable um, for the way in which they rejoiced when Judah fell. So um, since we have a lot to read, though, I'll, um, without further ado, go ahead and begin chapter 25. The word of the Lord came to me, son of man, set your face toward the Ammonites and prophesy against them, say to the Ammonites, hear the word of the Lord, word of the Lord God, thus says the Lord God, because you said, aha, over my sanctuary when it was profaned and over the land of Israel when it was made desolate and over the house of Judah when they went into exile, therefore behold, I am handing you over to the people of the east for possession and they shall set their encampments among you and make their dwellings in your midst. They shall eat your fruit, and they shall drink your milk. I will make Rabbah a pasture for camels, and Ammon a fold for fl flocks. Then you will know that I am the Lord. For thus says the Lord God, because you have clapped your hands and stamped your feet, and rejoiced with all the malice within your soul against the land of Israel. Therefore, behold, I have stretched out my hand against you, You will hand uh, and will hand you over as plunder to the nations, and I will cut you off from the peoples, and will make you perish out of the countries. I will destroy you. Then you will know that I am the Lord. Thus says the Lord God, because Moab and Seir said, Behold, the house of Judah is like all the other nations. Therefore, I will lay open the flank of Moab from the cities, from its cities on its frontier, the glory of the, uh, of the country, Beth Yeshemosh, yes, Yeshemoth, uh, Baal Meon, and Kirathiam. I will give it along with the Amorites to Ammonites to the people of the east as a possession that the Ammonites may be remembered no more among the nations and I will execute judgments on Moab then you will know that I am the Lord thus says the Lord God because Edom act revengefully against the house of Judah and act, act and has grievously offended in taking vengeance on them therefore thus says the Lord God I will stretch out my hand against Edom and cut it off from it man and beast and I will make it des des desolate from Teman even to Dedan they shall fall by the sword, and I will lay my vengeance upon Edom by the hand of my people Israel, and they shall do in Edom according to my anger and according to my wrath, and they shall know my vengeance, declares the Lord God. Thus says the Lord God, because the Philistines acted revengefully and took vengeance with malice of soul, soul to destroy in never-ending enmity, therefore thus says the Lord God, Behold, I will stretch out my hand against the Philistines, and I will cut off the Cherethites and destroy the rest of the seacoast, I will execute great vengeance on them with wrathful rebukes. Then they will know that I am the Lord when I lay my vengeance upon them. In the eleventh year, on the first day of the month, the word of the Lord came to me, Son of man, because Tyre said concerning Jerusalem, Aha, the gate of the peoples is broken, it is swung open to me. It shall be replenished now that she is laid waste. Therefore, thus says the Lord God, Behold, I am against you, O Tyre, and will... Bring up many nations against you as the sea brings up its waves. They shall destroy the walls of Tyre and break down her towers. And I will scrape her soul, soil from her and make her a bare rock. She shall be in the midst of the sea, a place from, for the spreading of nets. For I have spoken, declares the Lord God. And she shall become plunder for the nations and her daughters on the mainland shall be killed by the sword. Then they will know that I am the Lord. For thus says the Lord God, behold, 
I will bring up against Tyre from the north Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon. It's the first time he's mentioned by name in the book. King of kings with horses and chariots and with horsemen and a host of many soldiers. He will kill with the sword your daughters on the mainland. He will set up a siege wall against you and throw up a mound against you and raise a roof of shields against you. He will direct the shock of his battering rams against your walls and with his axes he will break down your towers. His horses will be so many that the dust, their dust will cover you. Your walls will shake at the noise of the horsemen, horsemen and wagons and chariots when he enters your gates as men enter a city that has been breached. With the hoofs of his horses, he will trample all your, street, all your streets. He will kill your people with the sword, and your, and your mighty pillars will fall to the ground. They will plunder your riches and loot your merchandise. They will break down your walls and destroy your pleasant houses. Your stones and timbers and soil they will cast into the midst of the water in, into the midst of the waters. And I will stop the music of your songs, and the sound of your lyre shall be heard no more. I will make you a bare rock. You shall be a place for the spreading of nets. You shall never be rebuilt. For I am the Lord. I have spoken, declares the Lord God. Thus says the Lord God to Tyre. Will not the coastlands shake at the sound of your fall? When the wounded groan, when slaughter is made in your midst. And all the princes of the sea will step down from their thrones and remove their robes and strip off their embroidered garments. They will clothe themselves with trembling. They will sit on the ground and tremble every moment to be appalled at you. They will raise a lamentation over you and say to you, How you have perished, you who were inhabited from the seas, O city renowned, who was mighty on the sea. She and her inhabitants imposed their terror on all her inhabitants. Now the coastlands tremble on the day of your fall, and the coastlands that are on the sea are dismayed at your passing. For thus says the Lord God, Then I will make you a city laid waste, like the cities that are not inhabited. When I bring up the deep over you, and the great waters cover you, then I will make you go down with those who go down to the pit, to the people of old. And I will make you dwell in the world below, among ruins from of old, with those who go down to the pit, so that you will not be inhabited. But I will set beauty in the land of the living. I will bring you to a dreadful end, and you shall be no more. Though you be sought for, you will never be found again, declares the Lord God. <laughs> the word of the Lord came to me. Now you, son of man, raise a lamentation over Tyre and say to Tyre, who dwells in the entrance of the sea, merchant of all of the peoples to many coastlands, thus says the Lord God. You'll notice in this section that Egypt and Tyre received the most attention. Egypt, of course, was very prominent. Tyre was small, but economically really, really strategic and important. And so that's part of the reason why they're receiving extra attention here. O oh, Tyre, you have said, I am perfect in beauty. Your borders are in the heart of the seas. Your builders made perfect your beauty. They made all your planks of fir trees from Sanir. They took a cedar from Lebanon to make a mast for you, O oaks of Bashan. They made your oaks, your, your oars, and they made your decks of pine from the coast of Cyprus inlaid with ivory. If fine embroidered linen from Egypt was your sail, serving as your banner, blue and purple from the coast of Elisha was your awning. The inhabitants of Sidon and Arvad were your rowers. Your skilled men, O Tyre, were in you. They were your pilots. The elders of Gabal and her skilled men were in, your, in you caulking your seams. All the ships of the sea with their mariners were in you to barter for your wares. Persia and Lud and Put were in your army as your men of war. They hung the shield and the helmet in you. They gave you splendor, men of Arvad. And Helic were on your walls all around. The men of Gamad were in your towers. They hung their shields on your walls all around. They made perfect your beauty. Tarshish did business with you because of your great wealth of every kind. Silver, iron, tin, and lead they exchanged for your wares. Uh, Javan, Tubal, and Meshech traded with you. They exchanged human beings and vessels of bronze for your merchandise. From Beth Togermoth, uh, Togermoth they exchanged horses war horses and mules for your wares. The men of Dedan uh, traded with you. Many coastlands were your special markets. They brought you in payment ivory tusks and ebony. Syria did business with you because of your abundant goods. They exchanged for your wares emeralds, purple, embroidered work, fine linen, coral, and ruby. Judah and the land of Israel traded with you, and they exchanged for your merchandise wheat of mineth, meal, honey, oil, and balm. Damascus did business with you for your abundant goods because of your great wealth of every kind. 
wine of Helban, and wool of Sahar, and casks of wine from Uzal, they exchanged for your wares. Wrought iron, cassia, and calamus were bartered for your merchandise. Dedan tra uh, traded with you in saddlecloths for riding. Arabia and all the princes of Qadar uh, were your favored dealers in lambs, rams, and goats. In these they did business with you. The traders of Sheba and Rama traded with you. They exchanged for your wares the best of all kinds of spices and all precious stones and gold. Haram, Kana, Eden, traders of Sheba, Ashur, Chilmad traded with you. In your market, these traded with you in choice garments and choice of blue and embroidered work and in carpets of colored material bound with cords and made secure. The ships of, ships of Tarshish traveled for you with your merchandise, so you were filled and heavily laden in the heart of the sea. Your rowers have brought you out in the high seas. The east wind has wrecked you in the heart of the seas. Your riches, your wares, your merchandise, your mariners, your pilots, your caulkers, your dealers in merchandise, and all men of war who are in you. With all your crew that is in your midst, sink into the heart of the seas on the day of your fall. At the sound of the cry of your pilots and the countryside shakes, and down from their ships come all who handle the oar. The mariners and all the pilots of the sea stand on the land and shout aloud over the cry and, and, and over you and cry out bitterly. They cast dust on their heads and wallow in ashes. They make themselves bald for you, put sackcloth on their waist, and they weep over you in bitterness of soul with bitter mourning. In your wailing they raise a lamentation for you and, and, and lament over you. Who is like Tyre, like one destroyed in the midst of the sea when your waters came from the seas? You satisfied many peoples with your abundant wealth and merchandise. You enriched the kings of the earth. Now you are wrecked by the seas and the depths of the water. Your merchandise and all your crew in your midst have sunk with you. All the inhabitants of the coastlands are appalled at you, and the hair of their kings bristles with horror. Their faces are convulsed. The merchants among the peoples hiss at you, and you have, become, you have come to a dreadful end. You shall be no more. I want to note in chapter 28, verse 3, there will be a mention again of Daniel, who appeared in Dan, uh, Ezekiel 14, 14, among Job and uh, Noah. Uh, many Old Testament scholars think that it's probably a reference to um, a Ugaritic uh, hero epic that's partially preserved, referring to a Daniel. I don't think that's a sound interpretation. I think that by this time he's made at least an, a reputation for himself as someone who's in exile at the same period as Ezekiel. Uh, but he'll be mentioned in this next passage. Ezekiel chapter 28. The word of the Lord came to me, Son of man, say to the prince of Tyre, Thus says the Lord God, Because your heart is proud, and you have said, I am a God, I sit in the seat of the gods, in the heart of the seas, yet you are but a man, and no God. Though you make your heart like the heart of a God, you are indeed wiser than Daniel, no secret is hidden from you. By your wisdom and your understanding you have made wealth for yourself, and have gathered gold and silver into your treasuries. By your great wisdom in your trade, you have increased your wealth, and your heart has become proud in your wealth. Therefore, thus says the Lord God, Because you make your heart like the heart of a god, therefore, behold, I will bring foreigners upon you, the most ruthless of the nations, and they shall draw their swords against the beauty of your wisdom and defile your splendor. They shall thrust you down into the pit, and you shall die the death of the slain in the heart of the seas. Will you still say, I am a god, in the presence of those who kill you, though you are but a man and no god, in the hands of those who slay you? You shall die the death of the uncircumcised by the hand of foreigners, for I have spoken, declares the Lord God. Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me, Son of man, raise a lamentation over the king of Tyre, and say to him, Thus says the Lord God, You were the signet ring of perfection, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. You were in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was your covering, sardius, topaz, and diamond, beryl, onyx, and jasper, sapphire, emerald, and carbuncle, and crafted in gold were your settings and your engravings. On the day that you were created, they were prepared. You were an anointed guardian cherub. I placed you. You were on the holy mountain of God, in the midst of the stones of fire you walked. 
You were blameless in your ways from the day you were created till unrighteousness was found in you. In the abundance of your trade, you were filled with violence in your midst, and you sinned. So I cast you as a profane thing from the mountain of God, and I destroyed you, O guardian cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire. Your heart was proud because of your beauty. You corrupted your wisdom for the sake of your splendor. I cast you to the ground. I exposed you before kings to feast their eyes on you. By the multitude of your iniquities and the unrighteousness of your trade, you profaned your sanctuaries. So I brought fire out from your midst. It consumed you, and I turned you to ashes on the earth in the sight of all who saw you. All who know you among the peoples are appalled at you. You have become a dreadful end and shall be no more forever. The word of the Lord came to me, Son of man, set your face towards Sidon and prophesy against her and say, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I am against you, O Sidon, and I will manifest my glory in your midst. And they shall know that I am the Lord when I execute judgments in her and manifest my holiness in her. For I will send pestilence into her and blood into her streets, and the slain shall fall in her midst. By the sword that is against her on every side, then they will know that I am the Lord. And for the house of Israel there shall be no more a briar to prick or a thorn to hurt them among all their neighbors who have treated them with contempt. They will know that I am the Lord God. Thus says the Lord God, when I gather the house of Israel from the peoples, among whom they are scattered, and manifest my holiness in them in the sight of the nations, then they shall dwell in their own land that I gave to my servant Jacob, and they shall dwell securely in it, and they shall build houses and plant vineyards. They shall dwell securely. When I execute judgments on all their neighbors who have treated them with contempt, then they will know that I am the Lord their God. In the tenth year, in the tenth month, on the twelfth day of the month, the word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, set your face against Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and prophesy against him and against all Egypt. Speak and say, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I am against you, Pharaoh, king of Egypt, the great dragon that lies in the midst of the streams, that says, My Nile is mine own. I made it for myself. I will put hooks in your jaws and make the fish of your streams stick to your scales. And I will draw you up out of the midst of your streams with all the fish of your streams that stick to your scales. And I will cast you out into the wilderness, you and all the fish of your streams. You shall fall on the, on the open field and not be brought together or gathered to the beasts of the earth and to the birds of the heavens I give you as food. Then all the inhabitants of Egypt shall know that I am the Lord. Because you have been a staff of reed to the house of Israel. When they grasped you with the hand, you broke and tore all their shoulders. And when they leaned on you, you broke and made all their loins to shake. Therefore, thus says the Lord God, behold, I will bring a sword upon you and will cut off from you man and beast. And the land of Egypt shall be a desolation and a waste. Then they will know that I am the Lord. Because you said the Nile is mine and I made it, Therefore, behold, I am against you and against your streams, and I will make the land of Egypt an utter waste and desolation, from Migdol to Syene, as far as the border of Cush. No foot of man shall pass through it, and no foot of beast shall pass through it. It shall be uninhabited forty years, and I will make the land of Egypt a desolation in the midst of desolated countries, and her cities shall be a desolation forty years among cities that are laid waste." I will scatter the Egyptians among the nations and disperse them through the countries. For thus says the Lord God, at the end of 40 years, I will gather the Egyptians from the peoples among whom they were scattered. And I will restore the fortunes of Egypt and bring them back to the land of Pathros, the land of their origin. And there they shall be a lowly kingdom. It shall be the most lowly of the kingdom and never again exalt itself above the nations. And I will make them so small that they will never again rule over the nations. And it shall never again be the reliance of the house of Israel, recalling their iniquity when they turn to them for aid. Then they will know that I am the Lord God. In the twenty-seventh year, in the first month, 
On the first day of the month, the word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, made his army, army labor hard against Tyre. Every head was made bald, and every shoulder was rubbed bare. Yet neither he nor his army got anything from Tyre to pay for the labor that he had performed against her. Therefore, thus says the Lord God, Behold, I will give the land of Egypt to Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and he shall carry off its wealth and despoil it and plunder it, and it shall be the wages for his army. I have given him the land of Egypt as his payment, for which he labored, because they worked for me, declares the Lord God. On that day, I will cause a horn to spring up for the house of Israel, and I will open your lips among them. Then they will know that I am the Lord. The word of the Lord came to me, Son of man, prophesy, and say, Thus says the Lord God, Wail, alas for the day, for the day is near, for the day of the Lord is near. It will be a day of clouds, a time of doom for the nations. A sword shall come up upon Egypt, and anguish shall be in Cush. When the slain fall in Egypt, and her wealth is carried away, and her foundations are torn down, Cush and Put and Lud and all Arabia and Libya and the people of the land that is in league shall fall with them by the sword. Thus says the Lord, those who support Egypt shall fall, and her proud might shall come down from Migdol to Syene. And they shall fall within her by the sword, declares the Lord God. And they shall be desolated in the midst of desolated countries. And their cities shall be in the midst of cities that are laid waste. Then they will know that I am the Lord, when I have set fire to Egypt, and all her helpers are broken. On that day messengers shall go out from me in ships to terrify the unsuspecting people of Cush. And anguish shall come upon them on the day of Egypt's doom. For behold, it comes. Thus says the Lord God, I will put an end to the wealth of Egypt by the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon. He and his people with him, the most ruthless of nations, shall be brought in to destroy the land, and they shall draw their swords against Egypt and fill the land with the slain. And I will dry up the Nile and will sell the land into the hand of evildoers. I will bring desolation upon the land and everything in it by the hand of foreigners. I am the Lord, I have spoken. Thus says the Lord God, I will destroy the idols and put an end to the images in Memphis. There shall no longer be a prince from the land of Egypt, so I will put fear in the land of Egypt. I will make Pathros a desolation and will set fire to Zoan and will execute judgments on Thebes. And I will pour out my wrath on Pelusium, the stronghold of Egypt, and cut off the multitude of Thebes. And I will set fire to Egypt. Pelusium shall be in great agony. Thebes shall be breached. And Memphis shall face enemies by day. The young men of On and of Pi Beseth shall fall by the sword. And the women shall go into captivity. At Tehaphnehes the day shall be dark. When I break there, yoke, break there the yoke bars of Egypt. And her proud might shall come to, her, come to an end in her. She shall be covered by a cloud, and her daughters shall go into captivity. Thus I will execute judgments on Egypt. Then they will know that I am the Lord. In the eleventh year, in the first month, on the seventh day of the month, the word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, I have broken the arm of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. And behold, it has not been bound up to heal it by binding it with a bandage, so that it may become strong to wield the sword. Therefore, thus says the Lord God, Behold, I am against Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and will break his arms, both the strong arm and the one that was broken, and I will make the sword fall from his hand. I will scatter the Egyptians among the nations and disperse them through the countries, and I will strengthen the arms of the king of Babylon and put my sword in his hand. But I will break the arms of Pharaoh, and he will groan before him like a man mortally wounded. I will strengthen the arms of the king of Babylon, but the arms of Pharaoh shall fall. Then they shall know that I am the Lord, when I put my sword into the hand of the king of Babylon, and he stretches it out against the land of Egypt. And I will scatter the Egyptians among the nations and disperse them throughout the countries. Then they will know that I am the Lord. Ezekiel 
Ezekiel 31, in the eleventh year, in the third month, on the first day of the month, the word of the Lord came to me, son of man, say to Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and to his multitude, whom are you like in your greatness? Behold, Assyria was a cedar in Lebanon, with beautiful branches and forest shade, and of towering heights, its top among the clouds. The waters nourished it, the deep made it grow, making its rivers flow around the place of its planting, sending forth its streams to all the trees of the field. So it towered high above the trees of the field, its boughs grew large and its branches long, from abundant water in its shoots. All the birds of the heavens made their plain trees like its branches. No tree in the garden of God was its equal in beauty. I made it beautiful, and the mass of its branches, and all the trees of Eden envied it, that were in the garden of God. Therefore, thus says the Lord God, because it towered high and set top among the clouds, and its heart was proud of its height, I will give it to the I will give it to the hand of the mighty ones of the nations. He shall surely deal with with it as its wickedness deserves. I have cast it out. Foreigners, the most ruthless of nations, have cut it down and left it. On the mountains and on the valleys its branches have fallen and its boughs um, have been broken in all, the ra- in all the ravines of the land. And all the people of the earth have gone astray from its shadow and left it. On its fallen trunk dwell all the birds of heaven and on its branches are all the beasts of the fields. All this is in order, no trees by the waters may grow to towering height or set its, their tops among the clouds, and that no tree that drink water may reach up to them in height. For they all are given over to death and to the world below among the children of man, with, who, with those who go down to the pit. Thus says the Lord God, On the day the cedar went down to Sheol, I caused mourning. I closed the deep over it and restrained its rivers, and many waters were stopped. I clothed Lebanon in gloom for it, and all the trees of the fields fainted because of it. I made the nations quake at the sound of its fall when I cast it down to Sheol with those who go down to the pit. All the trees of Eden, the choice of beasts of the best of uh, Lebanon, all the drink water, were comforted in the world below. They also went down to Sheol with it to those who were slain by the sword, yes, those who were its arm, who lived under the shadow among the nations. Who are you thus like in glory in its greatness among the trees of Eden? You have been brought down with the trees of Eden to the world below. You shall lie among the uncircumcised with those who are slain by the sword. This is Pharaoh and all his multitude, declares the Lord. Ezekiel 32. In the twelfth year, in the twelfth month, on the first day of the month, the word of the Lord came to me, Son of man, raise a lamentation over Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and say to him, You consider yourself a lion of the nations, but you are like a dragon in the seas. You burst forth in your rivers, trouble the waters with your feet, and the fowl the rivers. Thus says the Lord God, I will throw my net over you with the host of many peoples, and they shall howl you up in my dragnet and I will cast you on the ground on the open field I will fling you and will cause all the birds to the heavens to settle on you and I will gorge the the beasts of the whole earth with you I will strew your flesh upon the mountains and fill the valleys with your carcass I will drench the land even to the mountains with your flowing blood and the ravines will be full of you And I will blot you out, and I will cover the heavens, and make their stars dark, and I will cover the sun with a cloud, and the moon shall not give its light, and the bright lights of heaven, and I will make dark over you, and put darkness on your land, declares the Lord God. And I will trouble the hearts of many people, and I will bring my destruction among the nations into the countries that you have not known. I will make many people appalled at you, and the hair of their kings shall bristle with uh, horror because of you, when I uh, brandish my sword before them. They shall tremble every moment, every one of them their own life, on the day of your downfall. For thus says the Lord God, the the sword of the king of Babylon shall come upon you. I will cause your multitude to fall by the sword of mighty ones, all of them. 
most ruthless of nations. They shall bring to ruin the pride of Egypt, and its multitude shall perish. I will destroy all its beasts from besides many waters, and no foot of man shall, tr uh, shall trouble them any more. Nor the hoofs, of beasts among, uh, the hoofs of beasts trouble them. Then I will make their waters clear, and cause their rivers to run like oil, declares the Lord God. When I make the land of Egypt desolate, and when the land is desolate, all of and when the land is desolate of all that fills it, when I strike down all that dwell in it, then they will know that I am the Lord. This is the lamentation that shall be chanted. The daughters of the nation shall chant it. Over Egypt and all the and all her multitude shall they chant it, declares the Lord God. In the twelfth year and the twelfth month, on the fifteenth day of the month, the word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, wail over the multitude of Egypt and send down and send them down, her and her daughters of majestic nations to the world below, to those who have gone down to the pit. Whom do you surpass in beauty? Go down and be laid to rest with the uncircumcised. They shall fall amid those who are slain by the sword. Egypt is delivered to the sword, drag her away in her multitudes. The mighty chiefs shall speak of them with their helpers out of the midst of Sheol. They shall come down, they lie still, the uncircumcised slain by the sword. Assyria is there in all her company, its graves all around it. All of them slain, fallen by the sword, whose graves set in the uttermost parts of the pit. And her company is all around her grave, all of them slain, fallen by the sword who spread terror in the land of the living. Elam is there, and all her multitude around her grave, all of them slain, fallen by the sword, whom, who went down uncircumcised into the world below, who spread their terror in the land of the living. And they bear their shame with those who go down to the pit. They have made her a bed among the slain with all her multitude, her graves all around it, all of them uncircumcised, slain by the sword, for terror of them was spread in the land of the living, and they bear their shame with those who go down to the pit. They are placed among the slain. Meshach Tabal is there in all her multitude, her graves all around it, all of them uncircumcised, slain by the sword, for they spread their terror in the land of the living. And they do not lie with the mighty, the fallen from among the uncircumcised who went down to Sheol, with their weapons of war, whose swords were laid under their heads, and their iniquities upon their bones, for the terror of the mighty men were in the land of the living. But as for you, you shall be broken and, lay, and lie among the uncircumcised, with those who are slain by the sword. Edom is there, her kings and all her princes, who for all their might are laid with those who are killed by the sword. They lie with the uncircumcised, with those who go down to the pit. The princes of the north are there, all of them, and the Sidians who have gone down in shame with the slain. For all the terror they have caused in their might, they lie uncircumcised with those who are slain by the sword, and bear their shame with those who go down to the pit. With Pharaoh, when Pharaoh sees it, he, sh he will be comforted for all his multitude. Pharaoh and all his army slain by the sword, declares the Lord God, for I spread terror in the land of the living, and he shall be laid to rest among the uncircumcised with those who are slain by the sword. Pharaoh and all his multitude, declares the Lord God. Let's pray. O Lord, you are the good shepherd who seeks and rescues the scattered sheep. You are the good shepherd who gathers your sheep and have them dwell securely. O oh God, we thank you for your word in which we are reminded that, we are, that you are our God. May we join with the psalmist and say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom we trust. In your same name we pray. Amen. So, um, we've got a couple minutes. Just want to highlight, too, that the fall of Jerusalem, the final fall of Jerusalem will happen in the next chapter. And so it's going to be a transition in the book, and then the prophecy in Ezekiel is going to become more hopeful once that event occurs. You'll also notice that all of these judgments and laments 
with the exception of the one in uh, chapter 29, verse 17, are right around the fall of Jerusalem, which happened in 586 BC. It began in 587 towards the end of the year, and then was finally accomplished, or Nebuchadnezzar finally destroyed Jerusalem in 586 BC. So this word of judgment's right around that particular event that you're going to read about when you get to Ezekiel chapter 33. Great. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah.